Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. Today we are going to talk about Google Collaboratory or Google Collab for short. If you use Jupyter Notebook previously, you would quickly learn to use Google Collab. To be precise, Collab is a free Jupyter Notebook environment that runs entirely in the cloud. Most importantly, it does not require a setup and the notebooks that you create can be simultaneously shared and edited by your team members, just the way you edit documents in Google Docs. Collab supports many, many popular machine learning libraries, such as NumPy, Scikit-Learn, Pandas. Therefore, whether you're a student, AI researcher, or somebody who is just curious about machine learning and data science, it is a really good idea to learn about Google Collab. As a programmer, you can perform the following using Google Cloud. Write and execute code in Python, document your code, create, upload, and share notebooks, and also import or save notebooks uh, from or to Google Drive. And also you can integrate PyTorch, TensorFlow, Keras, OpenCV, plus you have free access to GPU provided by Google. Therefore, it is a great idea to learn about Google Cloud. So how we can create it, it's super easy. Just go to drive.google.com. That's your Google Drive, which means that you need a Gmail address. And after that, you go to New. And in, the, in More, you can see that I have Google Collaboratory. If you have never used this, you need to first select Connect More Apps. And here, you can search for Google Clap. And you can see that it's already installed. So I'm not going to repeat this process again, but please do so if you need it. So now, again, we go to New, More, and Google Collaboratory, or Google Collab for short. And there you go. Now we have our first Jupyter Notebook. That's why we have .ipynb. And I call this Dr. Data Science, right? Um, so now you can see that here we have a set of options. You can save your... Uh, Jupyter Notebook, you can also download it as a Python file, .py. Um, you also have here uh, sort of like change runtime type. This is where you can decide if you need like GPUs. Uh, it is preferred not to use it if you don't need it, so then other people can use it. But here right now, we will be fine with CPU, so we don't need that. Um, and here you see that we have like this cell that we can write code. So it's either, as you can see here, code or text. So let's just start with code, and I will start by importing NumPy. Uh, you're probably familiar with NumPy. NumPy is the most, uh, I would say, uh, like useful uh, library uh, for scientific computing, which gives you a lot of tools to work with um, arrays of numbers, also uh, some of the linear algebra, sort of like operations, mathematical fun functions, so here we import NumPy as NP. We can also import NumPy, but then later on you have to always use NumPy. So just to simplify this, we import NumPy as NP. You can use any name you want, but obviously NP is the most common name that I know. And then you can run here, or you can see that you can use this shortcut if needed. So now we run import NumPy as NP. And to just make sure that this works, we can, for example, uh, generate a set of numbers from 0 to 5. Let's see if this works. It does. And the other thing I like about Jupyter Notebook is that, uh, let's say if I put a comma here, it gives you the actual documentation, right? So it shows you that this np.arrange uh, accepts a starting point, but it is optional. It has a stopping point, and the stopping point is mandatory. You should pass this, so that's why we have here five. And then also you can specify the step size, right? Like, you know, how many sort of like the step size when you go from one number to another one, right? And here you can also see that the starting point is included, and the stopping point is excluded. That's why here we have this half open interval. So again, this is really useful to have this information right when you're writing your code, um, um, and I, I think that that really helps you, especially if you are starting using these sort of like libraries, right? Um, so here I have, uh, so like the MP arrange, just to show you how it works. Uh, so I can use MP.arrange5, 
and then I use my sort of like a step size, right? So let's see what happens here. Um, so one thing that you need to be careful here is that, so the way that I write this right now, so I put five, two. So let's again look at the documentation. So this interprets the first one as a starting and the second one as a stopping, right? And obviously, you know, the starting point is greater than the stopping point. That's why I got sort of like an empty array here, right? Um, therefore, if I want to, for example, let's say choose all the uh, even numbers from zero to five, I can use like right this way. So then the starting point is zero, the stopping point is five, and this is the step size here, right? So I guess zero, two, and four, and obviously we skipped one and three. And remember that five is always excluding, right? So zero is including, five is excluding. Okay, so now let's do other things. Like for example, we can use print hello world. I think that's like the most famous uh, sort of like line of uh, code that we have here, right? So hello world, um, we can run this and you can see that here. You can also define a function in Python. So you can say like def uh, my function. And then let's say we get two input arguments and then we return uh, x times y, right? Um, so let's see how this works. So now if I say my function, and you can see that it can also use the other complete feature here, two and three, we should get six as expected, right? So again, you can use anything that you use in uh, Python, but as you can see here, we, we run all of this in your browser. So you don't have to install Python on your own machine. And let's say, even if you want to use like PyTorch, which is a uh, deep learning library, uh, so you can just say import Torch, and you don't need to you know, install the correct version for your operating system and your own machine. It's already there and you're using basically the um, computing resources from uh, Google. Um, so uh, let's see uh, what else we can do here. Something that I would say is another thing that is useful to know is that you can also use terminal commands with exclamation mark here, right? So if you're in your terminal and you want to see like your current working directory, you can use PWD, right? So now I just use this exclamation mark PWD and it shows me I'm in content, right? Or you can, for example, use exclamation mark LS. Uh, so here I have like the list of files here. So you see already there is uh, this file here that I called uh, sample data. Okay, so now let's look at other NumPy arrays that you can generate, right? So one way is to use like mp.0s. And if you, for example, say mp.0s3, now you have a NumPy array, which has three elements that are all equal to zeros. And similarly, you can create uh, a NumPy array that consists of uh, three ones. So you can see that we use mp.1s. You can also, something that is interesting, you can also create np.empty. You can create an empty set, right? Um, and, and the interesting thing here is that you can say like np.empty and you can use two. So you can see that now we have sort of like two sort of like, um, you know, uh, numbers that have just been filled in here, but we have obviously, a one-dimensional array with two elements in it. 